Space. Some regions are vast and empty. Other areas we call closets. Fortunately, Kevin from the Container Store has answers. Hmm, right. Kevin, what gives you the power over space? I'd say Alpha Customizable Closets. With free design and Alpha's adjustable shelving and drawers, I can create space in any size closet. Kevin, master of space and closets. Or just Kevin. Plus, right now, save 30% on Alpha and installation and earn up to $500 in credit through February 10th. At the Container Store, where space comes from. Where is that music coming from? Words are flowing out like endless rain into a paper cup. They slither wildly as they slip away across the universe. Pools of sorrow, waves of joy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Source Material Podcast. We've gotten our dad talk out of the way. We got Colton, his at least first of three uh, trips down here is out of the way. And tonight on the Source Material Podcast, we're going to be talking Ray Palmer, uh, the search for Ray Palmer, otherwise known as the Atom, DC's Atom, uh, the guy who can shrink and he can also, I don't know if he can get, uh, I don't know if he's got like Ant-Man ability where he can get, uh, or Giant-Man ability where he can increase his size, but we definitely know for a fact that he can get really, really tiny. You know, I, uh, I chose this story. And yeah, why did you? What yeah, possessed let's you to just, do this? Well, let, let's go back because uh, last year we did Salvation Run. Yes, right. Salvation Run comes at the end of Flash: Born to Run, which is um, some iteration of the Flash who dies at the end of that series, mm-hmm. like twelve issues long. On the way to Countdown, there's like a series of things that happen. Uh, one of which was Salvation Run, another of which was I think World War Three, and then eventually Countdown comes along. At the end of Countdown, yeah, we have Infinite Crisis because this is the countdown to which Infinite I, Crisis, which I fucking read. I read that when I was trapped in the jail during a hurricane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't remember a bit of what I read. <laughs> I don't understand what that story was about. And by the end of it, I wanted to walk into the hurricane. Something had occurred where we were, I think it might have been when we were reading Red Sun. And that's where I think this, uh, the idea for this began because we had read that story and we were talking about, you know, this alternate universe where Superman uh, was raised in Russia. Uh, and then at the end of that, we were kind of looking at other books where this had, like that iteration had occurred. One of which was The Search for Ray Palmer. And I got to reviewing those books and then I saw Red Rain, which is a book we've never read on here, but I had heard about. Also, uh, Gotham by Gaslight. I saw that listed there. I was like, oh, man. So my initial expectation, Mark... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> my initial was expectation that, was, was, that, was that this would make sense well yeah you were wrong sir <laughs> that, yeah you know i thought that this was going to be a standalone story where ray palmer get like i don't know if he gets just shot across different uh, iterations <sighs> of the dc universe and then some people got to go and try and find him and rescue him that's kind of what i thought was going to happen here what i didn't realize was that we were sm- smack dab in the middle of countdown to infinite crisis Wow, that was a mistake on my part because there is a lot, <laughs> a lot of stuff going on. I uh, feel like I'm mad at you about this. <laughs> I wouldn't blame you. I, here's the thing: I wouldn't blame you because I thought about, I thought about this uh, as I was reading it. I was like, well, this is kind of hard to keep track. Uh, number one, and and it feels like there's pieces missing. Why does pieces feel like they're missing? Oh, well, if you look at the issue covers, Mark, you'll see. And I didn't even notice this until I, right before I got on the count. Uh, right before I got on the uh, podcast. Sorry, I'm looking at a countdown. Um, so, all right. So, yeah, here's Red Rain. Now, if you look down by the UPC, you'll see it says countdown 25. Uh, and then if you look at the previous book to that, now, I wouldn't say that's previous. It's a book, it's a book that occurred after that. Uh, the one by Goth- that says Gotham by Gaslight, it's countdown 23. So I don't know if these are issues that shoot off from the Countdown series or are actually an essential part of what the Countdown series is. Now, to all of you out there that don't know what the hell Countdown is, I've got a synopsis here for you. Pretty much there was 52 issues of Countdown, starting with issue 51, counting all the way down to issue zero. And so they proceed in a backwards order. You follow me, Mark? Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Okay. So those 
the the countdown numbers that we were seeing on the bottom of these by the, the by the UPCs on the cover, like Countdown Twenty Three, makes me think, oh crap, is that the actual twenty third issue in the Countdown series? And then we're missing what's going on in between. Either way, they put this shit in a trade and called it the Search for Ray Palmer. So this is actually in trade form. All the books that we read. The problem is with no conclusion. <laughs> I read two more issues yeah. of Countdown that at least con- that at least somewhat conclude the Ray Palmer story because it, because here's the problem there's there is an end to it where Ray explains what happened to him where he's been it turns out he's been on one of the other Earths I think that Ray is gone and he kind of took over his life and when the Monitor figured out I, I mean I, I, now this is spoilers it's basically going to ruin the whole end of the story for you but um, <laughs> that's what we do here on the Sword of Zero <laughs> podcast but basically when the Monitor figured out that Ray was sort of illegally living in another universe which I didn't realize that that was that was a thing with all of the universe hopping that happens apparently you're not allowed to just take up fucking residence in another <laughs> universe <not. laughs> <laughs> just, I live here now um <laughs> Uh, so the monitors, so the monitor goes like kill Ray, and now and then they're trying to save him. And as it turns out, though, and this is where I lost track of what 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 I was reading. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. But apparently, like Bob, it was trying to become this <laughs> Bob the, the monitor. <laughs> Bob the monitor was <laughs> trying to become like this the only monitor. And I don't know. I, I there was something else that was going on with the monitors of greater significance than just what happened with Ray Palmer. But getting back to Ray. Um, with, with everything that happened in Identity Crisis, which if no, that's a book that's worth reading. Yeah, Identity yeah. Crisis is absolutely worth talking about on here. I read it just just, just to read it uh, last year. I think I was at the time I was still taking my kid to the park, so I would read comics in the park while he was playing. Because you know, why watch a child, right? <laughs> <laughs> we got better and more important things to do. <laughs> I'm not watching him go down the slide fifty fucking times. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> So, Good job. Do it again. <laughs> so I was reading Identity Crisis in the park, and it, it turned it's, it's great. But I think with with everything that happened with Identity Crisis, uh, Ray was like this. You know, and what happened with the Justice League? Ray is like fuck this place, and he you, and he goes through the multiverse to find as close to a situation as he had on Earth One. And he does, and he finds it. And he find, you know, he finds an Earth where the Justice League fucking wiped out super crime. Yeah, and everyone's yeah. wife is still alive. Yep, and he's living there until the until uh, the champions of the universe, or whatever the fuck they're called, and then the and the Bob the Monitor show up, and Bob's like, "You must die now." Yeah. For- well, and that was great. Uh, you know, if, if if there was one part of this story that I actually enjoyed was the fact that I thought that Bob was there to help them find Ray Palmer. I didn't realize he was going to, you know. Use Use the challengers, which end up being they're, they're called the challengers, but it's uh, Jason Todd, uh, the Red Hood, and it's also uh, Donna Troy and Kyle Rayner, Green Lantern. Uh, so they not are in, not in his ion form, by the way. That's that's correct, uh, uh, and they are assisting Bob, and they're they're spanning those universes. But anyway, right at the end, where fucking. Um, uh, Bob's like, hey, you know, we found Ray Palmer, and he's like, now you're gonna die. And I'm like, oh, w- w- wait a second. <laughs> Flash goes after him, and uh, the Flash of that Earth gets, he gets fried vaporized. Yeah, uh, immediately. So, uh, yeah, I I think that was probably, if anything, the brightest spot out of this whole story. But anyway, I interrupted you. Was there anything else you were trying to finish before but, I interrupted here's you? Here's the thing: like the trades don't incorporate those two issues of Countdown, and then like I actually kept reading because like I'm, because the story doesn't naturally conclude either. Like it just keeps going. But now the shit, the focus shifts from Ray Palmer to the bigger issues with the monitors and i i couldn't fucking handle that someday oh, yeah. you're like someday you're gonna be like let's do an entire month dedicated to countdown and i'm gonna be like let's do an entire month dedicated to fuck off um <laughs> <laughs> hey, th- let me read you this customer review from Arrow Rep on Amazon Prime. The last sentence: the lack of any resolution or chemistry among the protagonists make this another under- underachieving countdown tie-in. A situation made worse given the need of favorable support of the story. So, uh, yeah, there was 
there was hardly any resolution at all. There's no red. There's Other no than... resolution. Yeah. There's no resolution until you get to countdown. Mm-hmm. And it even says that in the Batman in the Batwoman Superwoman book, which is the last world they visit, like, like to be con- to be continued in the next issue of Countdown, which I don't remember what issues those were that I told you. I think it was like 18. I think 18 and 17 pretty much wrap up the story and then 16 get there into something else. Okay, so let's 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 back up real quick. Now I'll just what I'll do real quick is I'll kind of talk about yeah what what the countdown event was just real quick. Like I said, it was a countdown event leading up to the 2007 or no, this took place in 2007 and it was leading up to Final Crisis. Now the series of Final Crisis deals with an alien villain. Dark Sides deals with an with alien villain Dark Sides plot to overthrow reality and the subsequent death and corruption of various DC characters and their universe. So, yeah, it was a big event happened between 2008 and 2009. But countdown countdown to Infinite Crisis took place in 2007. So here here's the deal. We have 52 Earths. OK, now I sent Mark Radulich the Wikipedia to all the 52 Earths for D.C. Mark Radulich said, I am not reading that shit. You can <laughs> uh, not uh, count me in on that. But I can tell you that the Wikipedia for D.C. Multiverse Worlds is insane. It is very long. Like I'm talking like the first pre-52 or pre-crisis, I think, worlds. Uh, I mean, there was over 100. And then you get into the stuff that's happening here where there's there's this this occurs, I think, after the 52 event where there are 52 worlds. All right. And if you'll notice on the top of every issue of Countdown, Ray Palmer, the search for Ray Palmer, there's a couple of numbers after that. And that actually designates the world that these uh, challengers are going to trying to find Ray Palmer. And what's neat is, is you can go to the Wikipedia and match that up and figure out which world they're on and where that world has appeared in previous issues. So the challengers, like I said, we got Jason Todd, we got Donna Troy, we have Bob the Monitor, who is you know on the search for Ray Palmer to try and... Uh, to Because he's supposedly, you're led to believe that he's the, Ray Palmer's got the key to stop this universal crisis, this multiversal crisis. And And uh, we also have Kyle Rayner, just like you said, not the ion form, uh, but he is Green Lantern. So they are tracking. And as to how, I mean, they just have this technology that they can read the signature. And Mark, I have no idea, but people are getting branded with like the little atom symbol. You know, they'll catch up like in the first issue. I think they catch up with some people. Well, actually, I don't even know if they find him there, but I know in the 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 gender swapped world, they find the female Adam who's got like a, a thing on her arm. I don't understand what the deal is and what they don't even go into that. And they don't even explain like why he's going to these worlds and what he's doing there. Uh, was that something that I missed or did they just completely leave that out? Why is Ray Palmer doing this? I don't remember. I have no um, idea. I don't think it's explained. I think I it's just going wrong. Yeah, I, I, now, I mean, the only thing I remember about the countdown issues that I read were that, again, he was sad about what everything that happened in Identity Crisis and then was like, I, I went to go find a world where I'd be happy. And as far as branding people, I haven't the faint. Like, you're made to believe during the search for Ray Palmer that he had a bigger agenda. And then it turns out his agenda was, I just want to live in a world that's happy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and this is unfortunate because, again, it's smack dab in the middle of this 50 issue, 50 plus issue crossover or 50 plus issue event. And yeah, they did. They did put this in a trade. This is in a trade paperback that you can buy. But just like you said, Mark, it's it's there's no resolution. It's hard to follow. And there's definitely like pieces of this puzzle that are missing. But. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to try and just read real quick from the wiki, kind of give an idea of what uh, sets up these issues. I'll, we'll talk a little bit about the issues, and then we'll just kind of give our overall final thoughts, which you kind of already touched on already. But we'll, we'll say it again. If there's anything that you want to talk about here, Mark, you hop right in and, and say something. Like I said, I just went and grabbed from the wiki, okay, because I had a hard enough time trying to make sense of what I was reading in the first place. Uh, versus what all came before it. So, all right. In New York City, former Robin Jason Todd, now calling himself the Red Hood, is witness to the murder of Duella Dent. You ever heard of Duella Dent, Mark Radlich? Yeah, she's the Joker's daughter. Okay. Uh, he's he's witness to the murder of Duella Dent at the hands of a rogue monitor. Okay. Now, the monitors are these... There's, I think, one's assigned to each universe, and they're there to make sure the idea I got was to make sure that one, you know, uh, what would you call it? You know, one anomaly doesn't show up in another universe. So Ray Palmer going into another universe would be considered an anonymous, anonymous, <laughs> anomaly. So 
a rogue monitor shows up and murders Duella Dent. The monitor claims that her presence in this world is not tolerated as she is from an alternate Earth. Jason later meets former Wonder Girl Donna Troy. Now, see, Mark, you remember the conversation that we had with uh, with Al, Sed- Al Sedano? And he was talking about how convoluted Wonder Woman's origin was and how it just seemed like she shouldn't have been like part of the continuity. And the, he wasn't even referring to Donna Troy, the yeah. uh, Wonder Girl. Yeah, yeah. Did I say Wonder Woman? I meant Wonder yeah. Girl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Jason later meets former Wonder Girl Donna Troy after the other Teen Titans later pay their respects to Duella Dent's grave and speculates that the two of them, like Duella, may not belong in this reality either. During the Amazon's attack on Washington, D.C., uh, Jason and Donna discuss the monitors and the original monitor and anti-monitor when they are attacked by the Forerunner. All this stuff, have no idea. I'm just reading from the wiki. Who had been sent by the monitors. Another monitor arrives to save Jason and Donna from the Forerunners and takes them to safety. So this is probably Bob. Bob shows up, saves, saves Donna Troy. And Jason Todd at the funeral of the flash bar Allen, which is the flash that you were talking about. I think that died. The monitor tells Jason and Donna that the former Adam Ray Palmer is alive and lost somewhere in the nanoverse. And that locating him is key to surviving the coming crisis. Donna, Jason and the monitor nicknamed Bob by Jason meet with current Adam Ryan Choi in Ivy Town to recruit him in the search for Ray Palmer. Uh, searching for him within the microscopic nanoverse, they are captured by Queen Balthera and are later rescued by Kyle Rayner. So here's where Kyle Rayner comes in before Ryan Choi is abducted back into Ivy Town. Okay. All right. So there's there's where the Ryan leaves. Kyle informs the group that they will have to tour the multiverse to find Ray Palmer. Okay. So that's kind of how we set up what's happening. None of that gets explained to us. We're just thrown right into the first adventure, which is on the Wildstorm universe. Now, Mark, do you know anything about the Wildstorm universe? Not a clue. Okay. All right. Did you ever read anything? Man, Some did any of those characters look familiar at all? Like The Authority or Stormwatch or uh, Majestic? None of those? Okay. All right. I'll take that as a no. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine because uh, Wildstorm... It, this was back in the 90s when Jim Lee came out with Wildcats. He did Stormwatch. He had a, all sorts of uh, all sorts of stuff and what they called their Wildstorm universe there in Image Comics in the 90s. It ends up getting sold, kind of sets in limbo for a few, and then gets sold to DC. DC uses it for a little while and then kind of sets it back uh, and, and doesn't use a lot of the characters. Well, of course, the explanation for that is that the Wildstorm universe takes place in a different DC multiverse. Whatever Earth, whatever Earth this was, I can't even remember. There you go. That's so. That's the wild storm. They go and they try to find. Uh, they try to find Ray Palmer there. Can't find him. And then we hop into the next one, uh, the next Earth, which was the Jokesters, la- the Jokesters' last laugh. This is the one that kind of tells the origin story of the Jokester, which is the think of the Joker, but think of a good guy. All right, who's battling the crime society? I think is the name of that one. Uh, yeah, he fights against the crime society, uh, which composed of Ultraman. Shit, what's the girl's name? Power Girl, Power Woman, Power Woman, and Owl Man. So obviously he's the Owl Man is the opposite of Batman. But this one just kind of stuck out like a sore thumb. It was it was an origin story, and then I think the guys, the challengers, show up like for a quick second at the end. Uh, just in time for Jokester to kind of like hop into their portal and be whisked away. And then there was a little bit of a, there was some important stuff in here because the Jokester, I think, is Duella's father. And that might be how they tie him in to uh, Duella Dent and how she showed up on our universe. I, uh, it was fun to see the joke, the, the Joker as like the hero. You've watched some stuff with the crime society in it, haven't you? Yeah, I, I think I, I think I saw one of the DC animated movies had like the Crime Syndicate in it. Mm-hmm. And every time I, every time I see Crime Syndicate, I keep thinking of Ice T's Rhyme Syndicate. <laughs> I don't, I can't say. I now I love Ice T. I know you do, but the Rhyme Syndicate. Well, Rhyme, I don't remember. Rhyme Syndicate, baby. I yeah. don't remember that. All right, all right. So they can't find Ray Palmer there. 
Uh, you know, like I said, this is just an origin story for the jokester. Little to do with the overall story. Uh-huh. However, he does hop into the transport. Like, he jumps in when they transport and enter their portal. And I assume he ends up on another Earth. But it's the last time we see him in the Search for Ray Palmer series. Then we go into Red Robin. Yum. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Red Robin issue where this takes place in Red Rain. It's a very famous Elseworld story where Batman gets turned into a vampire. Clearly, you probably picked up on that when you were reading it, where Batman was, man, he, he is a disfigured vampire in this or on this earth. And it's it's interesting because, you know, you have Jason Todd who's there, but uh, the, the synopsis says in Gotham where vampires exist, the challengers must stop a vampire hunter from killing the vampire lord of the city, Batman. And, and really the big thing out of this is they encounter this horrifying vampire version of Batman. Not really a whole lot else happens here. They can't find, obviously Ray Palmer's not here. This isn't paradise for him. Uh, but what'd you think of uh, Red Robin here? Anything stick out to you other than... I'm going to be honest, All with all of these... Um, the the ones that I liked were uh, I liked the bit with the with Joker as the good guy from a visual aspect. This gender swapped world was fun to watch. Oh, just yeah. because just because you know like seeing seeing the dude in basically Wonder Woman's armor, I was just like he he looked a little <laughs> looked a little drag queenish. Like Wonder like, Man, they, yes he did. They, they, it's like they stuck Hercules in Wonder Woman's outfit, bra, you know, like chest uh, chest and all. Mm-hmm. Like like I don't think he'd really look like that. I'm just saying I don't think that. That would be the armor he'd be wearing. You know, it was literally like, you know, like like they should have broken out into you know uh, the, the the lumberjack song. We like to wear women's clothes, uh, <laughs> and that's all I can think about during that entire issue was was you know was Hercules running around in women's underpants. Uh, let's see the Gotham by Gaslight one. That was kind of fun. That had that that had a cinematic aspect to me. You know, the idea of there's this. They, they, there's this thing on the loose. I guess it's like, you know, like some iteration of, uh, of, oh, God. God oh, it's, the, it's, it's Man Bat. Yeah, Man uh, Bat. Yep. You know, like Man Bat's on the loose in Victorian England and Batman's a detective looking for it. And, you know, these, these four show up. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that actually had some, that actually had a fun story to it. I like that one. The wildfire one of meh. The re- red rain, which is I guess where Batman's a vampire. I'm like I no no interest in that one. Okay. Um, <laughs> red sun. Oh, uh, I mean I like that world, but I see here's the problem with it, right? When you know Red Sun concluded perfectly, it was like you know we had that debate over whether or not um he you know it's a circular loop or 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 not. Mm, yeah. Um, you know I can't I I don't. I don't totally remember how Red Sun ends, but we had a we had a really fun conversation about how the how how that book ends. I just kind of thought it ended perfectly that way. So kind of going back to it, I'm like, nah, everything you needed to say with Red Sun, you said already. There's no reason to come back to this to, to this earth. Did you have any sense that what was happening was actually occurring during the events of Red Sun? Because doesn't like doesn't Batman put the 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 bomb in his stomach and blow himself up? Um, I vaguely remember that. I can't remember that story now, but I swear but when I was reading it, I was like... But that's the problem this... with going back to it. If you go back to it, in nowhere in Red Sun did like Kyle Reiner show up. No, no, no none of them <laughs> showed up. Yeah, I, I see none of that happens. And I was wondering if like maybe what we were seeing here was taking like place... I don't know if they're transversing time as well, but it seemed like when Wonder Woman was tied up with her lasso, I swear I remember that happening in Red Sun as well. Oh, that um, definitely happened. To be a Batman... Batman I mean, he's trying to like talk sense to her. Yeah. And from what we saw in this issue, it looked like Donna Troy did that to her. Yeah, it definitely felt like that was happening during those events. And they had that now all of a sudden they have a hand in it. But yeah, you're you're right. It was it was a good story. Leave it alone. Uh, so you already talked about Superman, Superwoman, Bat, Batwoman. Then I, I guess we've covered them all. Let's talk about the final two, uh, which was was it seventeen and or eighteen and seventeen or nineteen and eighteen? This backwards, uh, they, fuck, backwards they, fucking shit. Eighteen and seventeen. Okay, so. All right. So we finally get to Earth 51. All right. Now, just like you said, this is an Earth where the the heroes have wiped out crime, super crime. And hell, they were even saying like bat or Superman hardly even puts his uniform on uh, other than just uh, at Christmas time to like diver- deliver food to places. <laughs> so it's a real like real peaceful world. Ray Palmer goes there and meets up with his wife. 
Now, this identity crisis is that's the one where Sue Dibney gets killed, right? Yep. Okay, I've never read that. It's I, really I good. Yeah, you said it's good. I've never read it. Um, but it's it's Adam's wife or girlfriend who kills her. Uh, apparently, she's like an evil, souped up version or something, right? I don't remember the a lot of the specifics, but basically, I feel like. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to start throwing stuff out there and it's inaccurate, but, but oh, wait, no problem there. We do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to, I, unfor- I, I remember liking it a lot and I remember it being a big mystery as to who killed, you know, Sue Dibney. And there were a lot of like false flags and turns in, 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 in the narrative, but I don't totally remember what the details were. I, I think that's the, that's the reason why in that final issue, we have that fight between Mary Marvel and Eclipso. I think Eclipso is, Ray Palmer's ex-wife, the one who killed Sue Dibney, I believe. So that's kind of why we're seeing both of those stories happen in that final issue. Uh, But yeah, Bob shows up. The challengers finally find Ray Palmer. We find out that Bob hasn't exactly been looking for Ray Palmer to rescue him. He's been looking at him to eliminate him because he's a anomaly in that universe. Uh, Ray Palmer, he showed up there, found his wife who was, you know, still alive. He found his, you know, all of his friends were still alive. Sue Dibney's still alive. And he also found his counterpart who ended up, I think, vaporizing himself, uh, you know, accidentally killing himself. So Ray Palmer of the DC universe that we know steps in and says, hey, you know, it can just takes up his role. And what he realizes is this iteration of Ray Palmer uh, was a little bit behind uh, time time wise. Uh, so he was able to, it was, bef- you know, he was able to start like, it was, I think it was like the first night he ever met his future wife. So he kind of picks up where he le- leaves off is falls in love with his wife. And then of course he starts having these nightmares about the, you know, the fact that he's replaced this guy. Bob shows up, all hell breaks, breaks loose with the challengers. Uh, the battle with Bob, like I said, doesn't go so well. Uh, the group <laughs> dinner, <laughs> we got people dying left and right, including Ray's wife. She gets killed. He's trying to save her and he, she gets killed. Yeah. The, the group then arrive on earth 51. Uh, they locate Ray living the life of his deceased counterpart. Bob reveals himself to have been working for Solomon's cause and tells Ray that he must be exterminated. The challengers attempt to stop Bob who succeed in killing the alternate versions of Barry Allen, Ralph Dibney and Jean Loring. That's her name. Jean Loring. But Ray and the challengers are able to escape. Uh, so that is kind of where we leave the story of the search for Ray Palmer. They head back to the regular Earth. Supposedly, the crisis still continues. <sighs> Mark Rylich, I don't know why. I, I have no idea. I don't know why I put you through this. All I know is <laughs> I, I, I thought it would be fun because we'd be revisiting, you know, the Elseworlds. I'm an Elseworlds fan. I love those stories. Uh-huh. We read, we read, uh, we looked over Red Sun. We've talked about doing Gotham by Gaslight. Isn't that on the schedule at some point? We're, we're doing Gotham by Gaslight later this year. Yeah, and so I was like, man, well, this will be fun to talk about. And it's no, it wasn't. You can't throw us. Yeah, I couldn't pick a more convoluted story to hop into doing Elseworlds <laughs> stuff with. So, you know, I, here's the thing. This is not Exiles, okay? Marvel's Exiles is a perfect example of a reality-hopping group that does it well. There is near the end of the first run of Exiles, they do what they call the World Tour, which is very similar to what we see here, where they go into... Marvel 2099, they go into the Heroes Reborn universe, they go into all these different universes of um, Marvel what-if history, I guess you would say, Uh, and if you don't know much about the Exiles, Mark, they're kind of like the, if you remember Quantum Leap, they are the group that strives to set right what once went wrong, directed by somebody to, you know, okay, you got to go into this universe and you have to fix this, you have to go over here and fix that, and there's... I mean, there's so many universes that they go into one where Tony Stark is a, you know, he's an insane uh, dictator and they have to face him and he's almost wiped out all the superheroes. They, they do that so great. I thought that's what kind of what we would have here, but instead we have, we have one issue quick hits. Oh, Hey, uh, Ray Palmer's not here. Oh, Hey, it was nice running into you guys. Okay. See you later. Oh, we, (laughs) you know, it, it, there was nothing to the story. So as depressing as that is, I also have to kind of counter that with, I understand we're in the midst of a 50-issue 
story arc and these were parts of that story arc and we may have missed a few things in between unfortunately it does not translate well outside of the story as a whole so no, i th- but i think this is you know i've complained about this before about dc where i feel like a lot of their events you can't just pick up and read without <clears throat> knowing what came before no, yeah like you know, the, the fact that, like, so they've rebooted their universe. So, the, the Marvel rebooted their universe once, okay, with, uh, with the, the, the last iteration of Secret Wars. Yeah, and I, I don't even know if you can call that a reboot because there's still shit that's still around that's not, you know, that was from the original. Uh, Spider-Man to me still feels like the Spider-Man to me a little bit. And, uh, but, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. But, I mean, as far as, like, continuities go, I mean, they've added stuff here. You know, like I think, like, original, like, the original Sin, you know, they've gone back and retconned certain things and added certain things. But for the most, you know, uh, I think, you know, the, for a while they played around with Captain America. It was actually a Hydra, you know, whatever. And uh, I don't know how that how that eventually resolved itself. But I mean, the the problem that's the thing with Marvel though. I feel like Marvel does a really good job of setting up places where you can just jump in yeah. at the beginning of a story and not really need to know what was going on in the greater universe. Like I've picked up several Marvel trades and I've never been like, I don't know what the fuck I'm reading here. That happens <laughs> almost every time I pick up a DC thing. <laughs> But it doesn't really lend itself to selling more bucks. Like, you know, like I'm I'm more drawn to reading Marvel than I am DC because I don't I'm not I'm not following a year's worth of comic books here. I'm picking up a trade here or there to read, you know, on a weekend when I'm not watching TV or whatever. And I, I think individually with some of the stuff you can do that. You you like if you pick up like Harley Quinn volume one, you can get it like I, I didn't really need to know what, what came before that. I got it. She moved to Brooklyn. She was distancing herself from the Joker and she was starting a new life. Just as another example, I read uh, Batman Rebirth. I started that at number one. I really, I, I didn't necessarily need to know what had happened in the new Fifty Two. We were, they were starting a new story with Tom King, and it just went on from there. I, I, I'll walk back some of what I said. You can pick up certain things, but I feel like their big events are so convoluted that it's, it's not really worth reading for, for me. I mean, like just, just me and you, and we're like smart guys, but me and you trying to figure out the timeline. <laughs> 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 well, it doesn't help when each book was numbered number one. <laughs> Call fucking Search for Ray Palmer number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, but not Search for Ray Palmer Red Rain number one, and this number one, and that number one. And I, I was like, first off, okay, I'm kind of confused there. Um, right. And then we've got to figure out where these guys are going and what world this is. And uh, some of that's fun. It's neat to see those alternate takes. But it needed to be bookended. Like yes. if you're gonna, like here's the thing: if you're gonna put together a trade paperback, go go through the the the, uh, the effort of saying here's the issue that preceded this. Because I mean, if you read the wiki, something did precede it, but it took place in another countdown. That's what I thought they, this would be. Because I don't mind the fact that it's you know like like he, set it up as here's the here's the prologue, here's the epilogue. Yeah. Don't just be like here. Are, here are these Elseworlds stories that connect to nothing. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm I'm on the wiki for the, all these DC multiverses and it's insane how large this page is considering you, you have them broken up between pre pre crisis and post crisis that's the first section uh then there's the yellow ones which are uh unclassified then you have the 52 which are the 52 that we're talking about right here which is post 52 and then after that that's in the red and then after that you have the new 52 uh and DC rebirth which there are specifically well there's 52 there's er- all the way up to earth 51 and then there's 53rd world so they skip earth 52 for some reason which maybe that's because there's an earth zero let me see yep there's an earth zero so I, that's just trying to understand oh wait a second sorry mark Radlitz. there's the dark multiverse don't forget about those guys i'm and about then, ready to start throwing shit <laughs> the arrowverse also this includes the arrowverse holy shit Wow. Earth 47, Harrison Lothario Wells. Earth 48, home to a bounty hunter killer who had magical knife that can penetrate force fields. Earth 35, the earth that has the ability to ride unicorns. <laughs> Where the-, the Chronicles of Cisco. Okay. I was wondering how in the hell are they getting these? Dude, Infinite Crisis, Smallville. Just imagine trying to pack all that in. But anyway, people have their Wikipedia fingers cut out for them doing this shit. 
Uh, I'm ready to call this night. This has been our coverage of whatever yeah, we what want to call it. <laughs> Whatever we made sense of, the, us attempting to make sense of the search for Ray Palmer. I'm on uh, alltimelines.com, and I'm looking at the DC Comics multiverse chronology. It is 76 pages long. Are you kidding me? Oh, I, you have to send me that link. I, I would like to see what that looks like. What is it called? All chronology? Alltimelines.com. And That's got to have all sorts of great stuff in it. Yeah. Right? Just, in, just aside from that, all timelines. Yeah. This is the ultimate DC reading order. Um, wow. And it assembles all the DC graphic novels together into one place. So, yeah, if, if, if there's one thing that I've taken away from this, it's that read Marvel. <laughs> Jesse, do a little bit more research before you suggest what you think is going to be a fun DC multiverse romp. Just take a look and see what you're getting into, which I did not do. So I'll be ready for that. You know what? We're going to we're going to ditch the cosmic and we're heading into the street next week. And I cannot wait to talk about some Punisher after that is like the ultimate palate cleanser after trying to shove countdown your fucking throat. Um, (laughs) So so angry. Jesus. (laughs) But all right, let's get into plugs, man. Uh, What's the plugs? Oh, hang on. Our next three source materials are Punisher Max Volume 5 the slavers and that's because we'll be reviewing season two of the punisher dc looney tunes 2, alita battle angel and we'll actually have somebody on that show that'll that that uh, read the manga that the adult that alita Ooh. is based on so that'll be fun nice so we, we have emerald twilight which is february 25th and then uh that same week we'll be reviewing black mirror bandersnatch bandersnitch bander ban- cumberbatch <laughs> bandersnatch it is bandersnatch okay yeah on the Metal Hammer of Doom, we've got A Pale Horse Named Death, Bring Me the Horizon, Beast in Black, Avantasia, and Dream Theater. We had to move The Crown. Uh, there was no way I could uh, I could watch all 13 episodes of The Runaway Season 2, which we'll be talking about, which we talked about last week. <clears throat> Because this is this is February fourth. Time travel. <laughs> but we we were, we were supposed to have talked about the Crown season two. We'll be doing that on the twenty first of February because I I could not <coughs> fit thirteen episodes of Runaways and then like how many many episodes of the Crown. So we just delayed that for a few weeks. Um, in the meantime, we've got an on trial for Pan's Labyrinth, and then at the end of the month, uh, February twenty eighth, we'll be doing a TV party tonight for Carmen San Diego the new animated show on Netflix. Plus we've got two boxing commentaries. We um real quick, we just did two back to back commentaries this past week. Three actually. We did uh <laughs> we we finally sat Jesse down and he watched uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. That was fun. Mm-hmm. And then uh after that we did a we did a commentary for Thurman versus Hasacita Lopez, uh, which was boxing on Big Fox. And then I didn't realize it, but that same night Ryan Bader was fighting Fedor Emelianenko in Bellator in their in their uh, finals of the heavyweight Grand Prix. I don't. It so wasn't so much of a fight as it was a mugging. Goodness. <laughs> so so we so myself, Robert Winfrey, and Pat jumped back on the computer again and in, did an impromptu commentary. It did not take. We took longer setting up the fight, talking about it, than the fight actually took. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, go ahead and check those out. This uh, February second, we have got Sergey Kovalev. This will have already taken place. Go back and check out Sergei, Sergei Kovalev versus Elan, uh, Eliander Alva, Alvarez. Um, we might do Davis versus Mar- um, Abner Marez. I'm not sure yet. It's on Showtime. Pat may or may not watch it. If he doesn't, then we're not doing it. Um, but we are definitely doing Leo Santa Cruz versus Miguel Flores, which is once again back on Big Fox. Big Fox, Jesse. Big Tings. Big Tings happen on Big Fox, baby. Yeah. All right. Anything else, sir? I'm going to go blow my nose and my head off. <laughs> oh, all right. So all that continuity snot gets... gets uh, uh, you know. <laughs> that's what happens. We start reading... Uh, you know what? I wasn't sick till I read the fucking Search for Ray Palmer, and then I got projectile leprosy is what happened. Uh, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'll throw the old can plugs in here at the end. So that's Mark Radlich. I'm Jesse Starcher. We'll catch you next week. Y'all have a good one. Uh, bye-bye. Thank you all for joining us. Make sure to give that Radulich in Broadcasting Facebook page a like to stay up on top of all the great podcasts we have to offer. We are at home on Spreaker, but you can also find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and recently we have hit the air on Spotify. Find your favorite podcast platform and type in R-A-D-U-L-I-C-H to subscribe for some great content. If you enjoyed this show, please feel free to share and spread the word. And as always, we appreciate any 
any feedback and look forward to entertaining you again soon. <laughs> Do not lay down and eat that bread. You hear me? Shut the door. <sighs> you can start the podcast real now. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to be diving into some DC multiverse. That's right. Get your tissues ready. Bloody noses will be happening all day long. Surprise! You're dead! Ha ha ha! It never ends! God, that's how I felt reading that book. Another monitor arrives. How do I... We've got all sorts of monitors. The the whole monitor. Computer monitor. Did you say the baby monitor? (laughs) The baby monitor. Uh, It was when the baby monitor arrived that all the little hell broke out. (laughs) Because that baby monitor just walked around like, you know, just toddling over things, knocking shit over. Would not (laughs) shut up. I mean, just Mm. drooled everywhere. It was bad. Shit on everything the baby monitor did. It it was terrible. (laughs) Turns out that baby monitor was actually baby dark side. Oh, oh my goodness. (laughs) Swerve, bro. Projectile leprosy, Jesse. Everyone's going to get projectile leprosy. No. One star review. Listen to your show and I got projectile leprosy. Okay. (laughs) Space. Some regions are vast and empty. Other areas we call closets. Fortunately, Kevin from the Container Store has answers. Hmm, Right. Kevin, what gives you the power over space? I'd say Alpha Customizable Closets. With free design and Alpha's adjustable shelving and drawers, I can create space in any size closet. Kevin, master of space and closets. Or just Kevin. Plus, right now, save 30% on Alpha and installation and earn up to $500 in credit through February 10th. At the Container Store, where space comes from. Where is that music coming from? Space. Some regions are vast and empty. Other areas we call closets. Fortunately, Kevin from the Container Store has answers. Hmm, right. Kevin, what gives you the power over space? I'd say Alpha Customizable Closets. With free design and Alpha's adjustable shelving and drawers, I can create space in any size closet. Kevin, master of space and closets. Or just Kevin. Plus, right now, save 30% on Alpha and installation and earn up to $500 in credit through February 10th. At the Container Store, where space comes from. Where is that music coming from?